One of the most interesting things in science is the connections that you can make. For example, between this item and this one. Let's go back to 1983 for a moment. When the Space Shuttle Challenger was about to be launched aboard was Sally Ride, the first American female astronaut. And since this was going to be an eight-day mission, there was the distinct possibility that that time of the month would appear. So uh, NASA scientists asked Sally how many tampons she would like to take along. And they built in a huge safety factor and came up with the number 100. So there was Sally going into space with 100 tampons. That generated a lot of discussion and publicity, which was good at that time, because many women were concerned about toxic shock syndrome, a bacterial infection that was linked to tampons that were super absorbent. Well, that problem today has essentially been solved by, by modern tampons, not totally eliminated. But at that time, it was a big concern. Now, it's not to say that there aren't other concerns about uh, tampons. Oh, there are stories that go around the Internet about manufacturers adding asbestos to the uh, tampon in order to make women bleed more so that they have to use more of these. That's total nonsense. There's also the story about contamination with dioxins, which indeed are nasty chemicals. And when uh, pulp is bleached, as it is done when these are, are manufactured, you can get the production of small amounts of dioxin when chlorine is used as the bleaching agent. Well, once they switched to chlorine dioxide, that essentially was eliminated. So there's no worry about dioxins. The, the amount that you find are absolutely trace amounts. But there is another concern that I think does have to be raised, and that's the plastic that is used in the applicators. Over a lifetime, a lady will use something like 17,000 tampons. That's a lot of plastic to dispose of. Of course, it should not go down the toilet, but some people do throw it down. And then it ends up in lakes and rivers and the ocean. You can walk along beaches and find these. And in the ocean, they break down into smaller particles that can be ingested by marine life. That's not good, of course, for the animals. Not good for people who eat the fish either. So how do we get around this? Well, proper disposal, of course, means that uh, you don't throw down the toilet, that the plastic goes into landfills, really, and uh, there it will stay without anything leaching out. There are also uh, uh, tampons that are made without plastic applicators. They use cardboard, which is uh, biodegradable, but it's not as comfortable. Plastic works a lot better when you ask women for their uh, impressions of these, uh, of these products. There are also tampons that don't have any applicator at all. And they're used in Europe quite extensively, but they're not very popular in North America because uh, here women don't like the, the digital intervention. But there is another possible environmental solution to this, and that is the so-called menstrual cup. And uh, this is inserted, and uh, it obviously collects the blood, which can be then dumped into the toilet, and the thing can be washed with soap and reused. Uh, there's a minor chance of infection if it isn't cleaned properly, a very, very small risk of toxic shock syndrome, just like with, with tampons, but it certainly is environmentally friendly. The question comes up, what about the silicone? Does it leach anything out into the body? And the answer is, is no. Uh, silicones are known to be uh, very, very stable substances, and they don't leak, leach any kind of, of chemicals out. So it's an interesting kind of uh, environmental solution to the problem because, of course, it's recycled, it's, it's reusable. But uh, as uh, I understand, it takes some technology in order to use it uh, properly, and, and uh, a lot of women don't like to uh, experiment with it. Whether or not any of the 40-odd female astronauts who have flown in space since Sally Ride used it, uh, we have no idea. NASA has not revealed that. Uh, but Sally Ride herself, uh, launched a career after being an astronaut as a, a science teacher. She started a company called Sally Ride Science, which was very, very popular. And um, unfortunately, she didn't live to see just how popular it would eventually become. Uh, Sally, unfortunately, died at a young age of, of, of 61 of pancreatic cancer. But uh, she was responsible for generating a lot of discussion about the connection between this interesting item, which really has been a great benefit to, to women, thanks to scientific intervention and rocketry.